Now, if you're struggling with client work as a filmmaker, it actually kind of might be your own fault. I'm really sorry. Now, there's definitely efficient ways and not efficient ways to get clients, but one thing that's helped me out the most is shooting spec work. Now, before you guys get mad at me for talking about shooting for free to actually earn money, if you do things a more efficient way in terms of doing your spec work to gain more clients, you actually might have a better chance than just sending emails all day long. We'll get there. Now, the first thing that you might be forgetting when shooting spec work that might actually not work in your favor is forgetting that you have the creative control. When you're shooting spec work or you're shooting free work, all the control in terms of what the thing is going to look like and how it's going to feel, the music you're going to use, the location, that's all within your control. When you're offering to do spec work and work with a client or potential brand in terms of doing a spec project, if you're giving those things up, you should be getting paid a little bit for it. You have control over what's gonna go on your portfolio and that's the exchange that you're going to make. Now, clients might have some input about things that might do better for them, but at the end of the day, the decision-making is going to be up to you. Uh, time and time again, I've seen people say that they're doing a bunch of free work for different clients, but then they don't maintain creative control, which ends up just being them doing free work for a potential client, but not actually portraying their skill set to get new ones. There's definitely a difference there, but you want to make sure that if you're working for free, you want to maintain that creative control over the project. You also want to make sure that you're incredibly specific. Now, you don't want to be wishy-washy in your email or in your pitch to shoot spec work or free work in terms of being able to build up your portfolio. You don't want to come into surprises while you're on set and find out that you're client actually didn't want to do the things that you wanted to shoot. You also want to be specific in terms of where it's going to be shared, how it's going to be used, and also you want to make sure you have a model release as well. This might be something that's going to go on your portfolio in a website where thousands of people are going to see. And you want to make sure you have that consent from the person or the people that you're working with in order to make sure that you dot your T's and cross your I don't know that sentence, but you just want to make sure that you cover yourself. Just because you're shooting spec work doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't have an invoice. Now, one thing that I like to do to establish that videography work does cost money is I actually will send an invoice when I'm doing spec work. Now, hold on a second. You don't want to freak out just yet, but you want to make sure that you add a 100% discount. Now, we're going to talk about how you're going to lead this conversation and some of the other points, but setting an invoice in terms of how much the video is actually going to cost if they were to pay you is a really great way for them to actually understand that even though this is free this one time, if they want it again, they're going to have to pay the money. Now, when making this exchange to give a client free content in order to maintain creative control, it goes on your portfolio, but it's also something they can use. There's three things that you want to get. Now, the first thing you're going to want to get is you want to be able to land a testimonial. Now, if I was to start everything all over again, I would have landed way more testimonials, which would have helped my business a lot. There's this thing called social proof whenever someone makes a buying decision, and you actually could see it on YouTube because if enough creators make videos about a certain type of camera, you're more inclined to want to research it and also buy it if you really feel like it. The same is going to work with your videography business and your filmmaking. If you were able to get a testimonial from every client you've ever worked with and you had a library of them that you could put on your website, when somebody is researching who they're going to pick next for the next project, they might see 50 videos of everyone singing your praises versus somebody else who doesn't have any. Now, I talk from two sides of my mouth because I really gotta get back onto my testimonial game if I wanna increase my business in terms of freelance clients. Another thing you might wanna consider is also getting a shoot ending questionnaire. Now, this isn't necessarily going to be a testimonial or asking how the experience was, but also getting an insights in terms of the industry that you're gonna be jumping into. Now, when I was starting out in making fitness content, one thing that would have been beneficial to me is asking the person I'm doing this back work with how much they think it would be worth to actually have that piece of content in terms of the success it would have for their business or their social media or anything like that that they're going to be using it for. This is going to help give you more insights in terms of how you can be more competitive in the market that you're going to be in. Different industries are going to have different requirements. They're going to have different solutions. And sometimes in a lot of times they're going to have different price points and being able to find that out through your spec work is going to be able to give you more industry insights. So you know how you're going to move in the space that you're moving in. This is something that you could just make a pre-made template, send an email with that $0 invoice at the end, or you can make a commitment in the contract that you're going to have to make sure that in order to get the content, they have to finish that questionnaire. That way you get all the data you need and you don't have to chase people for something that is only a couple of questions. Now, the last thing, and this is something where I'm still kicking myself from because I would have made a ton more YouTube videos, a ton more content, and maybe even had a bunch more clients. But it's making sure that if you are shooting spec work, you're shooting free work, that you have someone shooting behind the scenes content. Now, in a previous video, I did mention that people want to know how the sandwich is made. And it's very hard to do that on your own while you're focusing on the shoot itself. And you don't have anybody that's capturing behind the scenes content for you to show different clients and prospective clients what exactly it's like to actually shoot with you. 
one thing that I found was a gigantic miss when I was starting out is I didn't invest in having someone shooting behind the scenes content. Not only can it be a really good way of generating leads, but also it makes for repurposed content in terms of YouTube and anything like that. If you want to get things sponsored to use certain products and overall, it's just going to be good for your business to have that. Now, if you're somebody that wants to get into behind the scenes content, you want to start doing it yourself, or you want to do that for other people, I'll leave a video somewhere over here in the description down below, but having behind the scenes content is going to be the bread and butter to set yourself apart from other videos videographers coming up. If I have a combination of testimonials and people singing your praises, I find out what it's like to be with you on set in real time or as close as I can through some BTS videos, it's going to set you apart from a lot of people, including myself, in terms of getting more freelance clients to help you actually get the money to do things you want to do outside of doing client work all the time, unless you're into that kind of stuff. Now, all in all, I hope you guys enjoyed the video or the very least you learned something. And once you start to do a lot more spec work in a more efficient way, it's going to do a lot better than you just sending a bunch of emails, hitting people up and hoping they pay you money. Now, speaking of money, there is one more thing I need to talk about, and it's probably how much money you should charge when you're starting out in your filmmaking and your freelance video production. Now, I don't have all the answers, but this might be the one that you're looking for.